Well, good morning, church. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Katie. I'm the pastor here at Grace United Methodist Church. And I have to tell you, I just stand up here and look out at all of you and I'm just really glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us for worship. We have lots of wonderful things going on at Grace this month. It is the season of giving in honor of the greatest gift that God has given us. So this Sunday is our LifeWise Gift Sunday. We give gifts to a great Methodist organization here in St. Louis. And I was wondering, um, Elizabeth, uh, Julia, America, Gloria, I might need some help. There may be some gifts out here that I need you to bring up to the altar for me. So if you have brought a gift for LifeWise and you would like a special delivery, raise your hand. Oh, we have a lot. You know what? I think I'm going to need more helpers. Can you guys go grab those gifts? Grab the bags. No, 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 no. Go, go. They're <laughs> go out there. They're waving their hands. Get their things and bring, leave it there. Go get theirs and bring it up here. Okay, we didn't rehearse this. That's all right. If someone's got their hand raised, you grab their bag and then you bring it up here. Right up here. Right here. Yeah, good job, Atlas. All right. Oh, over here in the corner. Over here in the corner. Put that down. And then go right over there. And if my friends didn't get your gift, you can always grab, bring it up here after the service, right? Over in the over there. I see you waving your hand in the corner. I, I'm telling you, I, I see you. I see you. <laughs> well, as my special helpers are doing such a wonderful job bringing these gifts up for us, oh, I got one more over here. I want to let you know that next Sunday we're going to have one service at 1030 because it is our Sunday of joy. And so not only will the youngest among us be helping me with worship. It is the Sunday that our over 90 queens, and this year our one king gets to join the group, will be lighting the Advent wreath as well. So it is a Sunday we celebrate the full spectrum of the church family, and we're encouraging everyone to bring gloves, kid size gloves, one size fits all, maybe mittens. We're collecting gloves for the University City School District because as those of you who have kids know, the gloves disappear during the year, right? So we wanna make sure all of the preschool and kindergarten teachers have gloves to replace for little hands this season. So that's next week if you wanna bring those in. When you picked up your bulletin, you might have seen this kind of envelope. It's a special kind of envelope. Usually we collect our, it's not in your bulletin, I, I fooled you, sorry, it's by the bulletin. I'll have it in there next week, okay? But we have special envelopes because usually we collect our Christmas offering at the Lessons and Carol service, which we are postponing till next year. So we're going to be collecting it throughout the season of Advent. And our recipient this year is International Institute, because is there any better way to celebrate that this child that will be born to us will also become a refugee within the first few months of his life. And so we're going to give a gift in honor of all of our new neighbors coming and moving into St. Louis. So when you are ready for that gift, we've got special envelopes so that way we know where it's going. You'll also see them at both of our Christmas Eve services as well. So I just want to let you know about that. This week, we should have ready to print and get out to you our end of year report. And so I just want to say on behalf of the leadership of this church, well done. Thank you so much for your year of faithfulness and generosity. We are ending this year in a really healthy, wonderful place. In fact, we have made the budget for next year and we are going to be bold because of your gifts. All of our teams and committees are getting double the amount that we usually have for programming. We are also so excited that not only do we have Perrin coming on staff to help us continue to reach out to our neighborhood, we also have Pastor Tina who is helping our college ministry. Church, this is a good time and I love that we are in a place that we are looking beyond our walls for next year and we're going to do great things. So I just want to invite you as well as we come to the end of the year, 
if you would like to give a special end of the year gift, kind of as your way of saying, yeah, God is doing something in this place. And we're excited about what next year is going to be because we know God's Spirit is here. We would love to continue the spirit of generosity and faithfulness. So with that, I'm going to invite you, as you are able in body or spirit, let's stand and call one another to worship. Our theme for Advent is this image of home. So as we light the candle of peace, as we hear the story of Zechariah, it all comes back to this idea of laying a foundation for home. So let us call to worship. If life was a home, then we would pray. May love be the foundation. May God be the cornerstone. May the spirit be the windows ushering light in, and may hope be the walls holding us together. In this hour of worship, let us work towards building that home together. We may not know the path ahead, but God is here even now. Let us give thanks for a foundation of love. Let us worship holy God.
may be seated. As we reflect on the foundation of our faith in our lives, we gather together around the candle of peace. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. Peace that rests between us and our grief. Peace around our anxiety. Peace between us and our self-criticism. Peace amidst our relationships. Peace at the core of our being. Peace hovering through and in our world. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. So today, we light the candle of peace as a reminder and as a prayer. Let it be so. Amen. Advent is a season where we acknowledge the wait, where we know God has come, but God's kingdom has not fully come yet. And so while we wait, we do not wait in vain, for we know God's spirit is already at work getting things ready for when all will be made new again. Let us now enter into this time sung and spoken as we lift our prayers to God. Holy God, when John was born, Zechariah leaned down and whispered words of love into his ear. We know that you do the same for us, day in and day out, yet we fail to hear it. We forget that in the beginning we were made good. We doubt that we could possibly be enough. We hustle for our self-worth, and wear ourselves out aiming for perfection. We deflect words of praise. We hide behind shiny first impressions. Forgive us, trusting our worth is the hardest job. Open our ears as you open our hearts, so that we might rest on the foundation of goodness you have laid for us.
God of days gone by and God of the here and now, we understand the story of Zechariah. We know what it's like to be speechless. We know what it's like to be awestruck. We know what it's like to change plans and leave everyone whispering. What we don't always know is what the next right step is. We crave your voice in our ear, guiding our steps, revealing the way. So today, God, we pause to give you thanks for the things that leave us speechless. For love at first sight, for the moments when the doctor says the scan is clear, for the family that runs to meet us at the airport and welcomes us home, for every small miracle and concentrated beauty in our life, we are awestruck, we are speechless, we are so deeply grateful. But in between whispers of deep gratitude are people who are speechless for other reasons. We are speechless because of the suffering and despair, grief and loss, violence and injustice in our world. With every young person killed in the street, we lose our breath. With every threat of violence, we lose our words. With every update report on climate change, we lose our peace, and the cycle goes on and on and on. Creator God, who breathed life into us, move between us and our despair. Give us a voice to speak gratitude in the face of beauty and justice in the face of destruction. Give us words to heal where there is hurt and to invite where there is isolation. There are so many things that leave us speechless, O oh God, but we never lose your words of love and hope. God, you have blessed us greatly, and we are thankful that we are in a place that we can pour out abundance and love upon LifeWise. God, bless these gifts and the families they will go to. God, we thank you for the generosity of this congregation and the ways that your spirit is giving us courage and hope. That as we look to the end of this calendar year and we look ahead, we may not know what next year holds, but God, you are there and we know you're in this place. And so for every person who has given their prayers, their time, their money, their gifts, we give you thanks, God, for above all this church family, the way that they love and the way that they are a light to our neighborhood. Thank you, God. Continue to foster in us the spirit of hope. Give us peace where we are worried and tired. And may your joy pour forth from our lips. In your name we pray. Will you join me as once again we lift up 
are words of affirmation. We believe in God, the creator and giver of life, who brought all creation to birth, who mothers us and fathers us, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, born among us as a fragile baby, embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in God as trusting as a live. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathed into us at our birth, always drawing us on to be born again, encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ. Hunted at birth and humiliated at death, Christ entered our fearful darkness so that we might enter his glorious light and share the life of his resurrection. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate living together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Amen. I want to warn you for our next hymn, the words are correct, but your pastor is very fickle when it comes to the Christmas hymns, and I didn't like the tune. And so God bless Mary Edwards, who found the right tune and wrote in the words so the choir is ready. And so don't look too closely at the music in the hymnal, but I promise you'll know the tune and you'll catch on quickly. Let's sing together number 209. You did wonderful, church. Thank you. <laughs> Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the story of Zechariah and the birth of his son, John. When Elizabeth was full term in her pregnancy, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives, seeing that God had overwhelmed her with mercy, celebrated with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and were calling him Zechariah after his father. But his mother intervened, no, 
he shall be called John. But, they said, no one in your family is named that. They used sign language to ask Zechariah what he wanted the baby named. Asking for a tablet, Zechariah wrote, his name is to be John. And that took everyone by surprise. Surprise followed surprise. Zechariah's mouth was now opened, his tongue loose, and he was talking, praising God. A deep reverential fear settled over the neighborhood. And in all that Judean hill country, people talked about nothing else. Everyone who heard about it took it to heart, wondering, what will become of this child? Clearly, God has God's hand in this. Then Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. God came and set God's people free. God set the power of salvation in the center of our lives and in the very house of David, his servant. Just as God promised long ago through the preaching of the holy prophets, deliverance from our enemies and every hateful hand. Mercy to our fathers as God remembered to do what God said would happen. What God swore to our father Abraham, a clean rescue from the enemy camp, so we can worship God without a care in the world, made holy before God as long as we live. And you, my child, prophet of the highest, will go ahead of the master to prepare God's ways. You will present the offer of salvation to God's people, the forgiveness of their sins. Through the heartfelt mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining on those in the darkness, those sitting in the shadow of death, then showing us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God.
I had to wait until it landed on Disney Plus before I could see the musical Hamilton for the first time. And like everyone I know who has seen this masterpiece of musical theater, I instantly fell in love with it. It's the story of our founding fathers set to the soundtrack of hip hop music. And the two main characters, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, constantly intersect and weave in and out of each other's stories. After the Revolutionary War, both men become fathers for the first time. And they share their hopes and their fears in this beautiful number called Dear Theodosia. Two men, polar opposite in their politics, both orphans themselves and terrified of the reality of being a new dad, sing this blessing on their newborn child. You will come of age with our new nation, and we will bleed and fight for you, and we'll make it right for you. If we lay a strong enough foundation, we'll pass it on to you. We'll give the world to you, and you'll blow us all away. In some ways, we make the same promise every time we come to the baptismal font. As I carry in my arms this beautiful new child to introduce them to the church family, you sing a blessing over their life. We as a church pray that God will put a strong foundation so that this child can grow and change the world. Child of God, your loving parent, learn to know whose child you are. Grow to laugh and sing and worship. Trust and love God more than all. Our words are powerful. In our scripture reading today, we remember the story of Zechariah a man who dedicated his life to study and serving God, but with his wife Elizabeth was never blessed with a child. And so in his very old age, Zechariah was doing what he spent his whole life doing, working in the temple, fulfilling his priestly duties when his whole world is turned upside down. An angel from the Lord appeared and told him Elizabeth, his wife will conceive a son, he will be named John, and he will be a herald of God's arrival in the style and the strength of Elijah. I resonate with Zechariah. I've dedicated my life to serving God and God's people. I don't know what I would have said if an angel appeared and told me something that I thought was impossible. But in our story, Zechariah's response is one of doubt. Verse 18, Zechariah said to the angel, Do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man. My wife is an old woman. Luckily, Elizabeth was not in the room when he said that last part. And the angel responds, I am Gabriel. The sentinel of God sent especially to bring you this message, but because you won't believe, you notice that present tense there? You will not be able to say a word until the day of your son's birth. And at that moment, Zechariah becomes silent. For, in my rough calculations, for about a year, a year of being unable to say, I love you, to his wife as she progresses in this pregnancy? A year of being unable to sing his favorite hymns at church? A year of being listening, but you can't laugh at your friend's jokes. You can't offer support when they cry. A year to meditate and think and pray about what happened with that angel Gabriel. A messenger from the Lord appeared to Zechariah with glory and power, so much so the first words were, do not be afraid. 
begins speaking of miracles, God's great plan for all of humanity, and Zechariah's response was a tiny, narrow view of himself. Look, Mr. Angel, I know me. I know my life. This can't be right. He's so wrapped up in his point of view and in his story that Zechariah cannot see or even comprehend how God's great big plan can fit into all of this. Months pass, and Elizabeth gives birth to a son. And when the time comes for circumcision, Zechariah does something radical. Rather than continue his lineage and give glory to his own, name, Zechariah breaks the tradition and names the boy John. And it's at that moment his mouth is open, his tongue is loose, and the first thing he does is sing a song of blessing. Not for himself, but in this act of surrender, Zechariah moves beyond his story and finally enters into this big, beautiful, powerful, unexplainable, miraculous story of God. He sings a blessing onto his son of a future where God's mercies will shine on those in darkness, how this child will show us the way to peace. Our words can change the story. I spent my first 10 years as a pastor in youth ministry, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't like the overnight lock-ins, I'll be honest, but the rest of it I loved. <laughs> the chance to walk alongside these students was wonderful, to help them find God in their everyday lives. I was constantly awestruck on how God was using them to change the world. And every chance I would have to speak about this holy work, I would say, these children, these students, are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church. And how you receive them and how you speak to them will lay a foundation for what the church of tomorrow will be. I think back to just three years ago, and the foundation we were laying. Two separate churches, no idea what an N95 mask was or what was about to fall upon our society. But as a people of God, you spoke words of faithfulness and of courage and of hope so that when the world shifted, suddenly our churches are online on Facebook for worship, our two churches have merged together. The conversations were never based on fear or worry because we had spent years building a foundation on God's peace so it had been spoken into our very DNA. Our words will prepare us for what comes next. When Zechariah's speech was restored, so was his imagination. Suddenly he could see what could be, and he spoke that vision into existence. Who knows what's in store for our lives, for our church in the coming years? But if we make space in our lives, in our imaginations, for God's spirit to break through, to move from me to we, to move from fear to trust, to move from what was lost to what blessings will come. Then God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining on those in the darkness and those sitting in the shadow of death, and will show us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. Our words, when they're God's words, can change everything. They hold the power to speak life into darkness. 
They have the strength and imagination to change the story, and they'll prepare us for what comes next. What words will you speak this Advent season? And all of God's people said, Amen. As we move into this time of communion, if you have not received your communion elements yet, just raise your hand, and I'm sure some lovely people will make sure that you have your very holy, tiny little plastic cup that's awful to open, and lovely, homemade, gluten-free elements. You'll want to turn to the novel in your bulletin as we begin together our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, great God of the coming dawn, for in each new day you surprise the earth with splendor. Your spirit moves across the face of the waters and brings forth life. At the dawn of all things in a garden, you worked the earth. Elbow deep in mud, you fashioned us, gifted us, gave us work to do. Made from the earth, made by your hand, we forgot who we were. We forgot who you were, and we tried to remake ourselves. We rejected your love and fell into sin and death. Yet, even in our darkness, you continued to speak light and life. When we were slaves in a foreign land, you brought us out of our oppression, led us through the waters, and washed us up on the shores of a new life as a chosen people. As your people, we sometimes sought you and often strayed, but you were faithful to your promise and to us and called yourself by our name. The God of Israel did not abandon the people of Israel, and you spoke of a day to come when you would come once more to save. And so we who live on the edge of this land look across the waters to the horizon. We come to live on the edge of your new and promised day, and we raise our voices with all the saints as we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you and blessed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose coming was announced by wilderness prophets and who arrived to the song of angels in the choir and in the stall in a manger. In Jesus, you not only took our name, but our flesh. He was the one promised. He announced the new day and the acceptable year when blind folks would see, poor folks would rejoice, the captives would be set free, and the oppressed would once more walk upright in liberty. In stories, he spoke of waiting bridesmaids and prodigal sons. With tears and compassion, he brought a dead man to life and gave a woman at a well the living water she sought. With anger, he overturned tables and challenged the powerful. On the cross, he revealed the power of weakness, and in the emptiness of a tomb, he gave us a glimpse of your tomorrow that does not end in death. On the night on which he was betrayed. He sat at a table with friends. He took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he served it to them and said, Take this and eat it. It is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, he blessed it, served it to them, and said, Drink from this, every one of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. And so we remember. And so we offer our praise and thanks and our very selves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
I invite you to hold your elements in your hand as we blessed them together. So we await your new day. So we call on you to send your Holy Spirit on us once more and on this parched and thirsty land, on these elements of bread and juice. Let them be for us once more Christ's body. And let us be for you once more Christ's body redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again and we feast at his table. With all the saints who share your name and our flesh, we raise this song until we hear in fullness the harmony of heaven. God of the dawn, Christ of the new day, and spirit who's ever present, we wait for you this day, your day. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, for each time we can come together and remember, whether it's in the way that we used to do or as we sit in our pews with tiny little cups, the symbol is there, the reminder is there, the promise is there, that generation after generation, you have been with your church, that whether it is a pandemic or just another Sunday, God, your love will not be stopped, that you are always with us. And so may this reminder once again give courage to our hearts and joy to our lips as we live out what it means to be Christ's body redeemed. And all of God's people said, Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we close together with number 213. <laughs> you have enjoyed your lunch I just want to remind you you are welcome to come to the parsonage this afternoon it is the one day of the year it's clean so if you want to see it come today or wait another 364 days 
but we would love for you to stop by. Just remember, masks are required, but I have goodies for you as you leave the house if you want to eat them outside. Now receive this benediction. I don't know what words will come at you this week. I don't know what your family or your co-workers or the lady in line at the store will say to you, but I hope your response is God's words of love. I hope that your foundation is so built on peace that no matter what comes at you this week, you can respond with the love of God and the hope of a better tomorrow. So may God fill your spirits and pour forth from your lips as we go in service this week. And all of God's people said, Amen.